Good morning, everyone. Thank you so much for joining us today for Hub Talk 6. Today, we have um, Construction Opportunities Part 2. Uh, we'll, our guest speakers will be from the Texas General Land Office, from the Department of Transportation, the Texas A&M University System, and the University of Texas at Austin. Next slide. So our host today is the Statewide Hub Program, myself, Maya Ingram, and Lynn Hoddy, the Hub Director over at the Texas Department of Information Resources. Next slide. Our guest speakers today will be Vonda White from the General Land Office, Carlos Balderas from the Texas Department of Transportation, Keith Williams from the Texas A&M University System, and Tiffany Dockery Gibson from the University of Texas at Austin. Next slide. We're gonna to begin today with Vonda White from the Texas General Land Office. Vonda. Thank you so much, Maya. Good morning, everyone. Again, uh, my name is Vonda White. I am the Director of Disaster Recovery Procurement and Hub Coordinator for the Texas General Land Office. And first, I really would like to thank uh, Maya and Lynn uh, with the Statewide Hub Program and DIR for including GLO in this event today. Uh, we really appreciate giving the opportunity to share some of our procurement opportunities with you all. Uh, next slide, please. So for those of you that are not really familiar with the GLO, this slide tells you a little bit about the agency's history. It also gives you an idea of the very diverse mission and the broad scope of services that the GLO provides. It does a little bit of everything. Uh, so the GLO was created back in 1836, and it's actually the oldest state agency in Texas. It was originally formed to determine who owned what land. But today, the land office does a, very, a lot of different things. It manages the state lands. It operates the Alamo, including its up, upkeep and restoration. It helps Texas recovering from natural disasters. It helps fund Texas public education through the, public, the permanent school fund. It also provides benefits to Texas veterans and it manages the Texas coast, including uh, all Texas beaches. So as I mentioned before, the General Land Office, a lot of people aren't familiar with the agency, but once you get into it, you'll realize it does a whole slew of, of different things. Uh, next slide, please. So today I just wanted to go over briefly some of the construction related uh, opportunities that the GLO has to offer. And so here's a list of some of the, the, the more recent opportunities we have upcoming. It, it doesn't encompass everything as that list would have been too long, but this is just a, a few of the things that are coming up uh, in the next few months. So as you can see from the list, starting at the top there, we have the Resilient Builders uh, um, RFP. And that is part of our Resilient Builders program. That is gonna actually result in six separate solicitations, all based on different types of uh, buildings, of homes, I'm sorry. Uh, this is residential construction, so it is actually going to be building homes for Texas residents who were displaced uh, due to Hurricane Harvey. Uh, the next three on the list are not really big construction projects, but I wanted to include them just to give you an idea of some of the opportunities that can result from some of our major construction. So once we build a, a, a Texas State Veterans Nursing Home, those contracts result in a lot of smaller solicitations. So for those of you who don't have the capacity to maybe compete for the larger uh, construction services. There are many, many smaller opportunities, as you see here, uh, kitchen flooring, carpet and flooring, furnishings for our uh, veterans nursing homes. So don't get discouraged by thinking there's only big construction projects at the, T at the GLO. Those big construction projects are often broken down into smaller projects as well. Uh, we also have raising and realigning headstones for our Texas state uh, cemeteries. And also the Galveston Island State Park construction of breakwater and mounds. 
so as I mentioned before in the beginning, the GLO provides benefits to veterans. And so that includes the veterans nursing homes and cemeteries. So those two things alone provide many opportunities for maintenance and improvements of the nursing homes, uh, reconstruction and everything of the cemeteries. So there's just a vast opportunity from large to small um, for different types of construction, as well as that first one I mentioned with our disaster recovery program. There's always going to be opportunities for residential building. That is uh, one of the main focuses of the GLO is putting people back in their homes after, the, after a natural disaster. Next slide, please. So these are some of our solicitations that are currently posted. And like I mentioned before, the Resilient Builders Program is really a big project going on at the General Land Office right now. Those of you who are in the residential construction field, I want to mention that you should really pay close attention to the scopes of work for these RFPs because these are not your typical home building projects. So I don't want you to propose as if you're going to build a standard home. The goal of this residential building program is to build homes that are more resistant to disaster. So they're gonna have a whole new level of standards that are that need to be met, uh, raised higher above flood level, more resistant to high winds and, and rains so that they, people can recover and get back into their homes more quickly than they would if they were living in just a typical home. So for these uh, solicitations that are pictured here, I want you to take uh, great care in making sure that you review the scope of work very carefully because the requirements are not the same as building your typical uh, your typical home. Now these lists that I've just showed, the last one, they, they, the list of procurements changes quite frequently. So I encourage you to reach to uh, look at the ESBD very, very often, the Electronic State Business Daily, and search under agency 305 because it's constantly changing with upcoming solicitations. This that I presented to you today is just a small sample of what's coming and what's already out there. Next slide, please. So again, that's that's really uh, all I wanted to share with you all today. Here's the information, contact information for our historically underutilized business team, myself and Daphne, Daphne Grantham. We are available anytime to talk to you in greater detail about uh, upcoming solicit solicitation opportunities, about our mentor protege program. Please feel free to contact either one of us by email or by phone. We are teleworking. These are our office numbers, but we check our voicemails every single day all throughout the day. Email is the best way to get to us, but if you do call one of those numbers, please leave a message and we will get back to you. Um, and so with that, I thank you all for your time and I will turn it back over to Maya. Thank you, Vonda. Next, we have Carlos Balderas from the Department of Transportation. Carlos? Thank you, Maya. Good morning, everyone. My name is Carlos Balderas and I am the hub program manager for the Texas Department of Transportation. Uh, just to give you a little quick background around about TxDOT, we manage over 80,000 miles of highway across the state of Texas. We're in 25 districts throughout the state of Texas and, and are our presence in all but one of the 254 counties throughout the state of Texas. Next slide. Today I'll be sharing information on how to identify project opportunities related to construction, where we do both horizontal and vertical construction. Before I get into that, I do wanna make you aware of our DBE program, uh, as well as how it relates to our, our hub certification, which is managed by the CPA. I also wanna uh, show you where DBE resources are available and how we assist companies to get hub certified after becoming DBE certified. And then lastly, I'll jump into where you can find opportunities on our public website. Next slide. So this is a comparison uh, breakdown of our DB and hub program. 
On the far right, you also see our SBE program. Uh, our SBE program, I'll just give you a quick, uh, quick background about it. Uh, it is uh, a TxDOT program, and it's operated within TxDOT and follows TxDOT guidelines. Uh, you do become SB certified after receiving your DB certification. Uh, and our SB program uh, goals, uh, which we do apply, are tied to our highway and maintenance projects that are state funded. So that's the only that's the only area in which our SB program applies. Um, if you want to, Maya, you can click on the on the on the uh, page. It opens up into a PDF. Just click on the the page on the on the on the document. Oh, maybe not. <laughs> that's all right. I'll cover it real quick. So uh, unlike the, the HUB program, which follows the Texas government code, our DB program follows the federal government's code of federal regulations. And there, in there, you'll find all the information you need, uh, which tells you everything regarding to how we operate under the, HUB, on the, under the DB program. The governing agencies uh, for this program are TxDOT, as well as, its, as well as its TUC partners. So we do have <clears throat> a total of six members that are under the TUCP, um, uh, that make up the TUCP partners. That includes the city of Houston, the city of Austin, the Corpus Christi Regional Transportation Authority, the North Central Texas Regional Certification Agency, the South Central Texas Regional Certification Agency, as well as TxDOT. Uh, all of the other entities uh, that you heard about with uh, unlike, uh, besides TxDOT handle more of our metropolitan areas. So uh, the city of Houston, of course, handles Houston. You have Austin, Corpus Christi handles that area. Uh, North Central Texas will handle our Dallas and Fort Worth area. And then South Central will handle the San Antonio area. area. Any, any other area outside of those major metropolitan areas will be handled by TxDOT. Uh, looking at the maximum uh, Size standards, again, it's a three-year average. As you look at our construction, it's a little less. Uh, the standards are a little less in construction than it is to our, to our HUB program. You do have to have a minimum, uh, maximum personal net worth of 1.32 uh, million. Uh, the minimum ownership requirements, uh, minority and women, and anyone who's documented social and economic disadvantage. On-site reviews are required. So if you are looking to get DB certified, we will have somebody go out to your uh, company site to do, an, to do a review as well. Citizenship, U.S. citizen uh, or legally admitted permanent resident. Uh, residency, of course, uh, because this is a federal program, you can be DB certified in any one of the, any one of the uh, anywhere inside the United States. Uh, Home states, um, of course, you home state certification is required for certification in TxDOT. So you must be certified in your state in order to be before you can become certified in TxDOT. Processing time is about 90 days, and then of course the certif certification period is ongoing with an annual affidavit. So unlike the hub program where it's a four-year, it's a four-year renewal period on the DB side, you'll you'll maintain your DB certification as long as you meet the, the eligibility requirements to maintain your certification uh, by submitting your annual affidavit. Next slide. So in the D, under DB program, there's a link there that you can go to to find information about our DB program. In there, you'll find information regarding our DB certification. You'll find information regarding our TCP members that handle DB certification. So depending on the area in which your business resides, that'll help you to determine which of the TCP members you have to go through to get DB certified. There's also our uh, link to our diversity management system, which we use to manage uh, the projects that have DB requirements. And then you'll find DB forms that apply under our construction projects. Now, I did speak a little bit about third-party hub recommendations. Uh, and again, this is at the vendor's request. Uh, if you are, after you get DB certified, we'll ask whether or not you would like to become hub certified. If you do, we'll conduct a review to make sure that you are hub eligible. Uh, and we'll, we'll reach out to the CPA. And uh, we have reached out to the CPA. And we have a, memo, a memorandum of agreement with them to, uh, do these third-party reviews 
uh, to see whether or not you are eligible for HUB certification. Uh, DB information will be sent to the CPA for HUB certification, and uh, you must maintain your DB certification in order to keep your HUB certification. So again, that's that'll go that'll be ongoing as you submit your annual affidavit to to ensure that you are DB certified. Next slide, please. So. Textile's a little different. We have different divisions that have procurement authorities. So we don't, although we have a procurement division, other divisions are given the uh, are given procurement authority to handle their own specific projects. Uh, so we have, for instance, the highway construction, uh, which is uh, it's the goals that are handled that run through our highway construction RDB goals, and it is managed by our construction division. When you get into our construction, of course, there are pre-qualification requirements that you have to meet. Uh, so it's important that you're aware of that. If you want to bid on anything highway related, you have to be pre-qualified. Uh, there is also, if you're interested in, if you're just interested in subcontracting, there is a pre-qualification listing that's available so that you can go and look at who, who is all pre-qualified. And those are the entities that you'll want to reach out to if you want to subcontract. And you'll have to go through their process to become a subcontractor. Our letting schedule, we do have a letting schedule that's available, that's uh, biennial. Uh, agency updates, uh, again, you'll find information uh, on our business section uh, with regards to anything that we have updates to. You can view the plans that are online. Again, uh, viewing plans uh, as well as our online bidding system may require pre-certification, uh, pre-qualification. There is a bidders list as well. So if you're interested in seeing who, who bid on a project, that's usually posted after the letting. Material producer list and requirements. So if you're a company that uh, wants to have their materials used on highway related projects, there is a scientific process that you have to you have to go through to make sure that it meets the standards and the requirements before it's actually used. Standard specifications. So there is a book out there that kind of covers all of our uh, highway construction, construction lingo and, and all the things that, all the bid items and things that we, we address on our projects, special provisions, which address how the DB program is associated with our construction projects and all the requirements uh, therein. Building and special trade construction. So this is more of our vertical construction. This is the hub goals are applied to these specific projects. This is managed by our support support services division. So they handle everything that's building related or facility related. There is a link in our Texas business section that provides upcoming opportunities, current projects, past projects, as well as a biennial facilities master plan for future projects. Again, I always say plan versus react. So it's a good opportunity to go look at what we have on our website so that you can start planning uh, versus reacting when they're solicited. Professional services, uh, which is handled by our professional engineering and procurement services, we apply both DB and hub program depending on the funding type. So we do have, we do have uh, solicitations that are funded through federal, through federal government, and then we do have some that are funded through our, strictly through our state government. So uh, depending, on the, depending on the funding source, we apply DB or hub, hub goal. Uh, just like the heavy highway construction in professional services, if you want to do work in this area, you do have to be pre-certified. So there's a pre-certification process you have to follow and go through. Uh, and the actual individual, unlike the highway construction qualification process, the individuals that you want to use in engineering have to be pre-certified. They do make a listing, uh, uh, a biennial project plan available, so you can see what's coming up in the next two fiscal years. Our projects are let in waves, so there's four waves every fiscal year. And when you look at the project plan, it, it'll show you which wave the project will be let, so you'll know how much time you have to prepare before the, the project is going to be let or solicited. Bidding and contract requirements, so there are bidding and contracting requirements that need to be followed, and that information is available on, uh, through, the, uh, through our, PEPS pro, our PEPS division. And then computer aid drawings, there are, there are CAD, uh, CAD standard plan and files online that you can look at uh, that can be, and can be made, made available by our PEPS division. Next slide. 
our way right away division this handles the uh that handles like the uh the road the side roads the the purchasing and acquisition of the the side of the roads that we used uh where we're going to do construction uh just like the just like the uh highway and and uh, engineering you do have to be pre-certified in this area as well uh, if you decided to, to do any uh, any type of acquisitions or, re or real estate uh, to help TxDOT, you do have to be pre-certified. Contract opportunities are available on the website under our right-of-way division. Uh, planning maps, so if you want to look at our planning maps to see where we could potentially be uh, doing some work down in the future, you can look that. That's available. Publications and rules, so there are publications and rules uh, as well if you're looking to get into our right-of-way division opportunities that need to be followed. Um, in this, under the right-of-way division, they're similar to our PEPS division. We do have projects that are both federally and state funded. So depending on the funding source, we're either gonna apply DB or HUB goal. Environmental, uh, again, environmental division. This is also run through, our, uh, run through during our construction projects. Uh, they handle our environmental testing uh, prior to any projects uh, commencing to make sure that everything's on the good, good uh, on the up and up, uh, that there's no environmental things that we're going to be uh, breaking, uh, so that we can make sure that we can move forward with the projects. Under our environmental division and under the SB section, there are open contract opportunities that that you can find. And there's also a contract schedule available so that you can see what opportunities are going to be coming up down the pipeline. Again, plan versus react. Make sure that you find those opportunities. And if you need help, give us a call. Design build. Um, this is these are our, uh, our multi-million dollar projects. These are our very large projects. Um, in this, we have a DB. This is mainly funded by federal funding, although there's small portions of state. Uh, as long as there's one dollar of federal funding, it's DBE. So the majority of these pro projects are going to be DBE uh, related. This is handled by our Projects Finance Debt and Strategic Contracts Division. Uh, when you go into the when you go into the uh, website, you'll find information on active pro uh, procurements, executed contracts, and alternative delivery program resources. Again, if this is if you're interested in, in jumping into some of our major projects. Uh, again, there's uh, there's a lot of information out there that you can find, again, on our active projects, uh, active procurements to see what we have coming up. Next slide. <clears throat> so we also work with local governments as well to set local government goals on projects. We do work with our local government division, uh, which is municipal, it could be a uh, city, a county, um, a metropolitan planning organization, which is an MPO or a COG. So we work with all these uh, public entities across the state uh, to help set DB goals on their projects. There, in in the website uh, under te under the business section, there are LG specific specifications that you need to follow. Uh, to identify these specific projects, I would recommend going through the local government project sites for contract opportunities. So. If you do if you do any work with the local government and you see a project out there, if you, if you see a DB goal, more than likely they work through us to set that DB goal. We also work with local airports, which is handled through our aviation division. Uh, and under the under the local airports, we do set DB and hub goals. In our public website, you'll find information on contract opportunities. You'll see information on regard to our bidders list. Uh, there are there are pre-qualification requirements that you have to meet in order to do business uh, with our uh, with our local airports under our aviation division. And then, of course, I also recommend going through the local uh, public sites for the contract opportunities. And again, more than likely, if you see a DB goal, they went through us to set that DB goal. Again, there's two links you saw up top: the Texas Business section and the Inside Tech Stop. Um, would you be able to click on the Texas business section, Maya? Up top on the left-hand side, Texas business section, yes. Does that open up?
All right, stand by, Carlos, while I switch the screen. Okay. Okay, so all the information that I just addressed is going to be found on this website under our Texas Department of Transportation website, and it's going to be under the business section. So if you at the top, you'll see some headers. Uh, if you were to click on our business section, this is what would this is what would populate. Uh, if you scroll down again, this is where you'll find information on our on all the project information that I've made available or that I just uh, covered or addressed with you. Uh, you'll find information. Uh, Again, on our PREPS division, construction division, aviation, right away, local government um, divisions. Uh, can you go back to the to the presentation? Sure, one moment. Okay. As well as our DB program. Sorry, I just want to say that real quick. And then click on the other link that says Inside Text Dot. Uh, and then scroll down, please. Uh, and then under uh, Texas structure, click on divisions. So here you saw districts as well that was above it, but this is our this is a listing of our divisions. You'll also find other information in here uh, related to project opportunities or contacts that you may need to, may need to uh, communicate with to get more information related to their projects or upcoming projects. Um, and if you go back, uh, go back one to, to the previous slide. I mean, start to, I'm sorry, to the previous, uh, click the back button to go back to Inside Text Dot. There you go. And then right above that, under so click on districts. So again, and scroll down, please. So if you're interested in communicating with our districts, uh, here's here's an area where you can where you can find contact information with any of the districts across the state. If you want to get uh, information on any projects as well, you can reach out to our districts. It has uh, contact information available. Again, we we operate in 25 districts across the state. So I just want to share this with you so that you could see uh, where you could find the contact information for those districts. Okay, go back to the slide to the presentation again plan versus react we we uh, we're working to get more information on our text.website website where you can see a listing of our schedules that are uh that are that are available for upcoming projects so make sure to take time to, to look for that information on our website if you can't find anything on the website make sure to contact us can you go to the next slide So again, contact us. There's our, our civil rights division at text.gov, or you can call us at 512-416-4700. Again, I know there's a lot of information on our public website. Uh, sometimes it, it, you know, it could be better organized, but if you can't find it as you're doing your search, please make sure to call us uh, so that we can point you to the right direction where you can find out uh, specific opportunities related to your business category. Uh, again, whether it's Highway related, we'll show you where that information is. If it's engineering, environmental, right away, uh, or if it's uh, if it's uh, if it's vertical with regard with regards to our facilities, um, give us a call if you're having trouble finding that information, so that we can show you where it's where it's available on our website. Again, plan versus I always say plan versus react. Plan versus react. Try to get ahead of the skin. Try to get ahead of the solicitations by looking at what's already gonna be coming down the pipeline so that you can prepare yourself by the time it gets ready to be solicited. Uh, that's all I have, and thank you very much. Thank you, Carlos. Next, we have Keith Williams with Texas A&M University System. Keith? Good morning, everyone. Howdy. Uh, my name is Keith Williams, I'm the Hub coordinator for the Texas A&M University System. Next slide, please. A&M System is one of the largest higher education systems in the nation. We have 11 universities, a comprehensive science center, 
and we have eight state agencies and the Dallas campus. Within those eight state agencies, we have Forest Service, the Texas Division of Emergency Management, AgriLife Research, Texas A&M Engineering Extension Service, et cetera. So some of the responsibilities of the A&M system office include system-wide planning, coordination, and execution of the policies of the Texas A&M University System Board of Regents. Next slide, please. So where are we? We are everywhere you can think, all the way north to Canyon in West Texas A&M University, all the way to the northeast with Texas A&M University, Texarkana, and all the way down south to Laredo with Texas A&M International University and everywhere in between. So we basically reach all 254 counties, and that is with our state agencies, of course. But we've got those 11 universities all intertwined within the great state of Texas. Next slide, please. So one of our main customers is the Office of Facilities Planning and Construction. That's why everyone is here today. So A&M System Office of Facilities Planning and Construction manages all construction projects valued at $10 million or more. The FPNC is currently managing in excess of 50 public projects, totaling approximately $2 billion, and is assisting with over 20 public-private partnerships, or P3s, totaling over $1 billion. So the FPC is also responsible for code compliance, quality control monitoring, and monitoring schedule compliance of all the P3 projects. Next slide, please. Uh, doing business with Texas A&M University System, Facilities Planning and Construction. So like everyone should know, the Texas Electronic State Business Daily ESBB, which is located in the Smart Buy section, the texassmartbuy.com, we are agency code 710. Again, we are agency code 710, and that is for the Texas A&M University System. So we post all of our opportunities in the smart buy, but the actual RFP slash RFQ is posted in our eBuilder website. So for instance, we'll post it on the Texas smart buy and we'll put a link to the eBuilder site and that's where you would submit your proposals. Next slide, please. Getting a design project with FPNC, the RFQ process. That's when the architect assembles the team with consultants and responds to the RQ. The RQ includes seven specific requirements. So it's a statement of qualifications and the availability to undertake the project, the prime firm's ability to provide services, the past performance on A&M system projects, the performance on past projects, ability to identify and resolve critical issues on the project, and execution of the offer, and knowledge of best practices throughout our AM system. Next slide. Some of the critical areas of importance in response to the RFQ, the experience of actual team members on these projects. So basically, we want to know that you have these relationships with these subcontractors. We want experience of prime firms with selected consultants. We want to have um, experience of actual team members on specific project delivery types. Proposal is specific to the project and the campus. Next slide. Some of the construction delivery methods. We have the CSP, the competitive sealed proposals, uh, the CMAR, construction manager at risk, and the DB, the design bill. Next slide, please. So some of the projects in construction that we have, we've got the Relis Academic Complex up in Bryant, Texas. We're looking for signage package. Uh, at Texas A&M University and College Station, we have, we have the South Campus Recreation Center for some site work, foundation, concrete, site utilities. And in the Texas Medical Center, we've got the P3 project, which was just announced yesterday. It's called the Texas A&M Innovation Plaza. It's a five acre, Campus in Houston, there's going to be three towers, and the light tower is scheduled to be complete in June 2022, which will 
house students for Texas A&M, Prairie View, nursing students, etc. So this is a, a very large project. Uh, we've got a uh, Texas A&M University, San Antonio, Academic and Administrative Building One, looking for a final clean and window lock. Next slide, please. Some projects in design. We've got uh, Texas A&M University, College Station, the Innovative Learning and Instructional Laboratory, looking for site demo. Vaughn Construction is the GC, Earthwork, Site Utilities, Foundation, Elevators, all, all other trades. Out in Stephenville, Texas, for Charleston State University, we have a aquatic center going on. Lot Brothers is the general contractor. Right up the street, or down the street, depending on where you are in Texas, at Prairie View A&M University, Engineering Classroom and Research Building. Vaughn Construction is the GC. Demo work, site prep, earthwork, site utilities, foundation, all trades we're looking for. At Texas A&M University, San Antonio, again, the academic and administrative building number two. Burn is the uh, GC and look for all trades. And then finally, up in Bryan, we've got the Dallas Industrial Distribution Building number one. No contract has been selected for that project yet. Next slide, please. Some of the points to remember. Next slide. So the construction project, here we go. Monitor the ESDB for project notifications. So currently, if you were to uh, go on to the ESBD and type in our agency code 710, we currently have four projects out there. We're looking for a billboard, digital billboard sign for Prairie View, uh, social media management tool, our uh, AM system office, audit and review services, and a design build for the Relis infrastructure. Brian. So it's it's understanding the process for each of the delivery models. So again, you've got the CSP, we've got the design build, and you've got the construction manager at risk. You know, find out who's awarded the project and interest in the point of contact. So for instance, if one of the large GCs like Spa Glass, we can give you that contact information so that you guys can build those relationships and create those partnerships. Next slide, please. And here's our contact information. You can go to hub.tennis.edu. That's our hub website where you can find all this information. Um, the Office of Hub and Procurement Program staff is myself. I'm, the, I'm Keith Williams, the hub coordinator. There's my email address, kwilliams at tennis.edu. And we have Jeff Zimmerman, who's the director of procurement and business services. And he's at jzimmerman at tennis.edu. I believe that is all that I have. And I want to thank you guys for listening today. And thank you again, Maya and Lynn, for hosting this event. Thank you, Keith. Appreciate you being with us. Before we go on to our next presenter, let me remind everyone that there's a questions box. If you have any questions, please so go ahead and submit your questions. We'll go through those at the end. Our next speaker is from the University of Texas at Austin. Tiffany Doggery Gibson. Good morning, everyone, and thank you to the Statewide Hub Program and the Department of Information Resources for having me here today. Um, as Maya said, my name is Tiffany Doggery Gibson, and I'm the Director of the Hub and Small Business Program at the University of Texas at Austin. I'm excited to be here with you to share some information about construction opportunities on our campus. Next slide, please. So I wanted to provide a little bit of context to talk about um, how construction is organized on our campus. Um, the structure is that, that we all, the construction area as well as the HUB program, all report through the Financial and Administrative Services Unit on the University of Texas at Austin campus. Um, we all report through the Senior Vice President and Chief Financial Officer where our core values are diversity, innovation, integrity, service, stewardship, and teamwork, which all allow us to measure the degree of our success in supporting the mission of the university. The Facilities and Planning Management Group, or FPM, has two distinct areas dedicated to construction projects that serve our main campus. They also serve our remote locations, the Marine Science Institute in Port Aransas, 
and McDonald Observatory, Observatory located in the Davis Mountains. The Project Management and Construction Service area works to enhance the university's physical environment by managing design and construction for renovation, infrastructure, and minor new construction projects. Their focus is campus clients in the academic, research, infrastructure, student life, and arts and entertainment areas. And the other construction division that we have is Capital Planning and Construction. They work, our CPC, they work closely with campus clients such as the individual academic units, athletics, other FPM departments um, like our campus real estate office and the Office of Sustainability. They also work with outside designers, consultants, and contractors to manage capital projects valued at more than $10 million. These major capital construction projects consist of new building construction, some repair and re re rehabilitation, as well as architecturally or historically significant projects across the campus. Next slide, please. So with the differing divisions and as a standard in the construction industry, budget, the design of the project, the risk involved in the project, the schedule and experience with similar projects all weigh into which construction delivery, delivery methods are used, as well as uh, the evaluation of solicitation responses. I wanted to spend some time sharing information about our ongoing agreements, which involve multi-year, multi-award contracts and are due for rebid in the near future. The technical service provider program involves contracts in place with our CPC division. These, are, these projects include things like commissioning, testing, adjusting and balancing services, material testing and surveying. The current contract, contracts are set up to be five-year contracts um, like I said, um, they, they renew throughout the year. Um, and a lot of these contracts are linked to procurements that are placed with our sister institution, the University of Texas system. The professional service provider program is used to solicit firms with the best overall qualifications in four broad categories. There's a category for engineering firms, a category for architectural firms, there is a combined service firm for AE or EA providers, and then a specialty services firms category. The general scope of the professional services RFP, RFP is to establish master agreements for professional services on an as needed basis for a variety of requirements, including program evaluations, project planning, facility space management, feasibility analysis, um, testing studies, conceptual design, and so forth in the professional services category. The job order contracting program is used to solicit firms best qualified to provide general construction services for projects on our main campus, as well as um, projects in our remote locations. The program also includes of various specialty JOC contracts covering mechanical systems, elect electrical services, wayfinding and signage, roofing and waterproofing, plumbing, insulation, and sheet metal services. Due to COVID, the resolicitation of the specialty services, JOC, um, was pushed back a little bit. I do anticipate that that will be coming out in the next couple of months. So definitely that is an opportunity that is on the horizon. So you want to definitely keep your eye out for that. Um, in addition, the McDonald Observatory JOC will, is, is scheduled to be rebid um, before the end of the year. So that's another opportunity to, uh, to participate in that program. Next slide, please. So now I want to take some time to talk about some individual projects that we have on our campus um, as some examples. The first project is the Austin State Hospital project. This project is a collaboration between the University of Texas at Austin Dell Medical School and the State of Texas Health and Human Services Commission. The facility will, will replace the current Austin State Hospital building and provide psychiatric care. The facility will improve the operational efficiency of the hospital and cre create a more public and dignified presence in the urban neighborhood of the state hospital campus. The RFP that, that is scheduled to be out um, July 10th, um, that is being issued, it's not managed by 
it's managed by the University of Texas at Austin. However, the GC is one of our, our uh, community partners. Um, again, it will be the RFP will be released July 10th, and the responses are due back July 28th. Um, the package that's going out right now has over $90 million in subcontracting opportunities. A lot of the scopes are listed there on the slide. Um, and this particular package is for the warm core shell. Um, I also want to make note that the hospital completion package is due to be released July 2021, and that will be for the interior fit out of the hospital. So if that's a project that you're interested in, definitely you can contact um, our office and we can put you in contact with the GC on that particular project. Next slide, please. The next project is a competitive seal proposal for our Brackenridge Residence Hall. Now this project, um, the Brackenridge Residence Hall, was originally built in 1933 and is one of many residence halls on the southern end of our campus. The project includes renovation of five apartment buildings that contain 22 unique apartments. The base bid includes construction of a shed addition, replacement of existing windows and patio doors, interior modifications to walls, flooring, painting, HVAC and plumbing, and replacement of cabinet and plumbing fixtures in kitchens and bathrooms. That is a project that, like I said, is directly managed by the University of Texas at Austin. Um, and that is on, it is listed on the ESBD as well as listed on our projects, uh, our project sites for our construction divisions. Next slide, please. The next project I want to discuss is an RFQ for traffic engineering services. Um, this one is not yet on the street. However, our construction pr procurement area is finalizing this RFQ. The proposed contract will be structured as an IDIQ for professional service agreement for three years with two renewal terms of one year each. That's a total of a five year contract. Um, it will have a not to exceed value of $5 million. Um, Potential scopes in the contract include um, projects of various sizes uh, that have an impact on traffic analysis. There's traffic planning for typical and special events, addressing the requirements and expectations of the municipalities, um, recommended land use <clears throat> and appropriate traffic engineering modifications to mitigate traffic impacts, as well as recommendations for, safe, for the safest and most efficient transportation system in conjunction with a development process. Next slide, please. So with the myriad of construction groups and opportunities across the university campus, the UT Hub Program Office maintains relationships with both our internal construction groups, as well as a number of professional services providers, general contractors, and minority trade organizations in the community to ensure our ability to direct those interested in working with the university toward relative opportunities. A few keys to the success include get or maintain your HUB certification. We can't stress that enough. Um, your HUB certification facilitates direct marketing of our opportunities to you, um, participation in mentor protege program opportunities, as well as participation in, in programs designed to build capacity in the HUB community. Um, we encourage you to monitor our current bid listings on the ESBD and our internal websites. Um, you can take a look at those listings to see the, the specific scope of work. Um, you will find information about uh, any pre-bid conferences that are going on. And I will say, I don't see a lot of participation from our hub community at those pre-bid conferences. Um, definitely, that is a great opportunity to take advantage of um, an opportunity to meet with and connect with not only our, our internal project managers that have details about the scope of work and about the projects, but also um, others that may be bidding on those projects. So definitely want to take advantage of those opportunities. Um, it, also uh, it also is an opportunity um, when you're reviewing those uh, bid opportunities to look at um, what type of delivery method we will be using. Like I said, we have several different divisions and there's several, several different factors that go into um, what delivery method will be used. So definitely you want to be familiar with that. Um, additionally, you definitely want to introduce your business. Uh, I encourage you to send a capability statement to our office. Um, that lets us know your specialties. It lets us know what you're interested in. And likewise, we want you to spe specifically state your interests. 
when you contact us, let us know exactly what you're interested in, in doing, how you want to participate in the projects that we have. Do you want to participate in a mentor protege program? Are you interested in subcontracting opportunities? Are you interested in our ongoing contracts? Um, we can provide information about when those are scheduled to renew. So definitely, um, you want to make contact with our office and state your interests. Next slide, please. So solicitations for projects directly managed by the university are all posted to the electronic state business daily, like a lot of my colleagues have already uh, discussed. Um, if you're searching for our projects on ESVD, our agency number is 721. In addition to that, like I said, we do have um, two different sites for solicitation opportunities related to construction from our PMCS division, which does our renovations, and our CPC division, which does all of our new building construction. So definitely you can check there to find um, opportunities on the University of Texas at Austin campus. Next slide, please. Opportunity is knocking. So definitely we want to encourage you to reach out to our office, like I said. Um, our contact information is listed here. Again, I would highly encourage you to send us a capability statement at hub at austin.utexas.edu, or you can check out the hub office website at financials.utexas.edu slash hub in order to find out more information about the opportunities on the University of Texas at Austin campus. That is all I have for you today, and I'd be glad to stay around and take some questions. So thank you for your time. Thank you, Tiffany, and thank you to all the speakers. Again, let me remind you all, uh, you can send in your questions. Uh, a couple of things to remind you of, um, contact information for all our speakers is listed, but on the Hub webpage, you will find a list of Hub coordinators, uh, contact information, so uh, reach out to them and share, or let them know who you are, what your business does, and that you're interested in doing business with them. I'm going to turn it over to Tom for questions. Okay, thank you, Maya. And yes, we do have several questions that uh, we will now get to. Uh, first question, I own a trucking company and are there opportunities for hauling construction commodities and construction junk? Uh, uh, go ahead. Well, Sorry. Carlos. You go there ahead, Carlos. Okay, so I know at Texas there are project opportunities for construction. I'm sorry, for uh, hauling. Uh, so we do have a lot of hauling services uh, that we need, uh, and it's all different types, whether it's uh, debris removal, whether it's uh, uh, bringing in the aggregate there, uh, that for the roadway material that we use. Uh, there's a lot of different uh, types of hauling services that we need. Uh, for those specifically, you will most likely have to go through the uh, general contractor that we that we uh, award the project to uh, for those uh, and of course those general contractors do do receive db dbe credit for using haulers that are db certified okay thank you carlos uh next question does the GLO list uh, does the GLO list final bid tabs for their projects? Um, yes, we do. Um, we do not list the actual bid tab, but we do list a list um, the awarded vendors. Um, if you want uh, to see the actual bid tab or score sheet, then you can send us a public information request. Uh, contact, contact me at my email and I can give you exactly how to submit that request. And we can give you the specific bid tab for each solicitation. Okay, uh, next question. We are HUB certified. We are trying to bid on security services. Do we need to be pre-qualified? Are you talking about security services for construction projects? Um, Gay, if you want to go in and add another, uh, is it, I don't know if that was yours or Betty, if you want to go in and add another comment and clarify for us. Um, typically, and this is Lynn with DIR, 
uh, typically what you want to do, so you heard Keith and you heard um, Tiffany refer to some of their GCs and their bigger projects that they have going on. So they're going to have a general contractor that uh, oversees the construction projects. So what you would typically would like to do is find out who their major players are, find out who those uh, GCs are that are bidding on the, the big contracts with TxDOT, with GLO, with AM and Univers uh, University of Texas at Austin, and go and all of them have a website, and most of them, I would say, will have you register with them. So you'll go into the GC's website and you will tell them what types of certifications you have. So if you have a HUB certification, if you're DBE certified, um, and they'll ask what services or products you provide. They'll ask you what your bonding capacity is. Uh, so you'll kind of pre-register with some of these um, general contractors so that when they're going out for bid, they have their own built-in list that they're gonna solicit to and get quotes from internally. They also utilize the CMBL and will search for hub vendors. So make sure that you have your class and item codes updated. And anything through um, up through 899 is a commodity related class and item code. And anything in the 900 series is a service related class and item code. So make sure you have those up to date. If you don't know what those should be, go back um, onto the ESBD for maybe the GLO related procurements um, or the TechStart related procurements and find out what class and item codes they have assigned to those procurements. Um, UT Austin and Texas A&M system, I am assuming y'all post those on your website. I'm not sure if y'all use the ESBD as well, but go to each university's um, website or contact those hub coordinators and they can show you where they're posting those bid opportunities and you can see what associated class and item codes are tied to those projects. So you can ensure that you know, you may or may not have identified all of the class and item code numbers you needed to on, on your CMBL profile. This is Tiffany from the University of Texas at Austin. I wanted to jump in and say um, that it's not construction related. However, we do have a, a current RFP out for unarmed security guard services. Um, that's been on uh, out on the street for a little bit. So it's, it's due back um, June 29th. But definitely, if you are interested in uh, providing unarmed security guard services, you can contact us at hub at austin.utexas.edu, and we definitely will send you the information uh, for that particular RFP that's out right now. Okay, next question. Does UT Austin have any contracts for materials testing services? We do. Uh, those those are part of our ongoing uh, uh, contracts, and like I said, um, th those are multi-year and multi-award, um, and they come out at different times. So definitely, I encourage you to to check our websites that I have listed in in our presentation, as well as you can contact my office directly, and we can um, provide more detailed information about when those contracts will be coming av become available again. Okay, thank you. Uh, next question. Does GLO have a procurement schedule for upcoming flood studies from CDBG funding? So the original solicitation we did for flood studies has already closed. Um, and so that, that particular solicitation is in contract negotiations. Uh, we are, we do have a second solicitation for flood studies in the Rio Grande area that uh, is, is in the early stages of development. <clears throat> but if you monitor our website, we do have a forecasting calendar for upcoming solicitations. So once that one is ready to put on that calendar, it will show you the anticipated posting date. Okay, next question. I'm sorry, thank you. Next question. Uh, where can you find the hub coordinators? Thank 
So the club coordinator list is listed on the comptroller's webpage. If you go into the historically underutilized business, uh, I believe that contact information is at the very end. Uh, if you go into the related links on the right hand side for hub and business resources, it'll open up a resource page and show you a hub coordinator list. Okay, thank you. Uh, next question. We are a new hub company that produces very specific signage. Beyond sending our capability statements to hub recipients, do you recommend any other actions? Yes, I recommend that you send your capability statement and your products to um, statement over to the hub coordinators. Introduce yourself, let them know who you are and what you provide, and ask them if they have any uh, upcoming opportunity needs. Okay, this one may go hand in hand with the previous question, but uh, the question reads, we are a hub WBE private security company here in Austin. Most of the services provided or listed do not have security services as an opportunity. How do we promote or find those security guard opportunities? So that would start first by you uh, finding the NIGP codes that best describe what your needs are. Um, we would have to kind of look at the LBB contracts and maybe uh, visit with some of the agencies and determine if they have those needs. Uh, give us a call at the statewide hub and we'll explore the research opportunities that you would have. And I don't know what type of um, providers we have on our call today. Um, I don't know what special trades we've got out there, but typically when you're talking about construction mm -hmm. projects, when an agency or when a university let out those <clears throat> procurement opportunities, again, they're typically looking for the GC to manage that project. So um, they won't be bidding out specifically security related services that may fall under and be included with those general contractors um, in a different bid package that they may have available. So again, what you want to do, like Tiffany said, you know, y'all need to attend the pre-bids so you can see who is interested in bidding some of these projects. Once these bid documents are posted, those are questions you can ask at the pre-bid uh, conference. You can network with some of the GCs that will be responded, uh, responding to those procurements. And you need to go ahead and register yourself with these GCs that are bidding on these projects so that when they have an opportunity, they can notify you. So you may not have a direct opportunity with Texas A&M University system. Um, it, may, it may fall under Vaughn Construction. It may fall under SPA Glass. Um, and it may not be included in the first one or two bid packages. It may not roll out to bid package three or four. It all depends on how they have that structured. Um, so you'll want to find out who's providing these uh, GC services to the universities and agencies, and then you'll want to go and register your company, contact those companies, um, and let them know who you are and what services and products you provide. Numerous GCs that are doing business with the universities and agencies will have a hub-related staff member. So they will have a contact that is equivalent to a hub coordinator at a university or agency. So there'll be a point of contact and you can reach out to them and uh, they may, might be able to help you understand some other opportunities that they may have as well. Okay, thank you. Uh, next question, does a material supplier need to be pre-qualified? Under textile, I don't think they have to, uh, I want to say they don't have to be pre-qualified, uh, just their product has to be certified uh, to be uh, certified of approval before it can actually be considered uh, to be utilized on textile projects. Okay, thank you. Uh, next question, 
Is there any more information on the Austin State Hospital contract, or can you tell me again where I can get that information? Sure, yes, definitely. Um, actually, there is a pre-bid going on. I think it starts in, in just a few moments. So if you contact our office at hub at austin.utexas.edu, we can send you the information so that you can log into that pre-bid, um, as well as we can provide the contact information. I know Lynn was just talking about um, the, the hub equivalents at um, the different GCs. So we have her information that we can share for share with you. Um, the group on that project, the general contractor on that project is Turner Construction and Portia Talbert is uh, the contact that you would want to reach out to to get more information about the ASH project. Okay, thank you. Uh, next question. I have a screen printing and embroidery business. I can order uniforms, promotional items, etc. Where or how do I find out how to bid for this type of opportunities in that area? So one thing you can do is um, kind of do a reverse search. You can see what entity, what agencies or universities have brought, bought those specific products or services in the past. So I'm going to tell you it just as a general rule, and it's not applicable to all agencies, but agencies typically are not authorized to buy promotional products unless, unless there is a specific program they're allowed to promote. Um, so you'll want to maybe focus on your attention um, with the universities to see, I know UT Austin has, um, say, janitorial staff, and they have um, police officers. So there may be your opportunities to supply uniforms there. So you can um, look up the past year's spend on the hub report that's located on the comptroller's website and you can do a search by object code. This is different, the numbering system is different from the NIGP class and item codes. What you wanna do is search through those object codes for codes that specifically relate to what the services and products that you provide. And once you identify those, you can click on those codes and it will populate a list of agencies and universities who have reported spend in that area. Then you can go into each one of those and you can see who they spent money with and how much they spent. It's not gonna have specific PO numbers, um, but you can get an idea of who's spending money in that area. Um, and then what you'll wanna do is go back to the comptroller's website and use that hub coordinator contact list and identify those hub coordinators with those agencies and universities who have spent in those areas and contact them. And then they can help you identify how they bid those out, when they bid those out and what you need to look for. Okay, thank you. Next question. How do we find out what NIGP codes you use for the specific projects listed, and is there a general class item? There's not a general class item, but I want to ask Tiffany and Keith. Um, where do y'all post your procurements for your construction projects? And um, do you know how the NIGP class and item codes are tied to those when y'all post them? Keith, if you want to start, and then Tiffany, if you want to chime in. So we, we do post everything to the Electronic State Business Daily. And within that um, posting, we usually post the um, category codes that are associated with each project. And then we'll have a link that brings you to the eBuilder website, and that's where you would uh, submit your proposals for the RFP or RFQ that's uh, being proposed. Okay, and Keith, when y'all are say, uh, so a lot of these construction projects are typically built out or bid out in several different ways. You can have the CMR construction manager at risk. Um, and you can do design build. Um, and Keith, I don't know how y'all are letting a lot of y'all out, but do y'all identify, say, when you're going out for a CMR, do you identify, do y'all drill down to specific trades? You know, will you include NIGP commodity codes 
specific to plumbing and electrical HVAC? Um, or do y'all pass that on to the CMR and they handle that part of it? So usually it's passed along to this CMR, but I'll, I'll let Jeff uh, discuss this further. It, it's usually passed on to the CMR um, because in the CMR construction, as you know, it, it's not usually handled until at least six months down the road when that when that building is finally um, designed and bid packages would go out. Uh, so we typically just use generic um, commodity code when we post the CMR solicitation um, and drill, we would drill down into the specifics uh, when buyouts um, are taking place. Okay, and Tiffany, do you wanna add anything? Sure, sure. So um, I heard you ask, where do we post? Um, like the other agencies here, we post the ones that we are um, managing ourselves. We do post to the ESBD, to the Electronic State Business Daily. Um, but again, it, it depends on the delivery method. Sometimes <clears throat> in the case of a CMR, um, like Jeff has said, you know, um, there, there'll be a GC and they will um, post on their websites or on um, eBuilder or other tools. Um, that are standard in the industry, um, they do drill down um, depending upon what package it is. Just let's take the Austin State Hospital example, which is, is out right now. Um, they had a previous package that had all the pre-construction services and everything in it. Um, this package, like I said, has, has many different scopes. And so um, they drill down and, and they use um, the, the technology tools to reach out to hub vendors in um, in those particular categories. So, so there is some passing through that. Um, you also asked another question, let's see, do you post, do you pass along? So yes, yes, we pass that along to the GC um, if it's a CMR type project. So, um, and as far as how the codes relate, um, we have a crosswalk. So definitely um, we, when we do post, we post pretty generically. Um, but definitely our office will take the time to go in and look at the different scopes and, and try to reach out to the hub vendors within those scopes to let them know that there's a solicitation out there. But but definitely we encourage you to, you know, like I said, keep an eye out for those projects on our campus that you're interested in and contact our office if you're interested in it. Because um, definitely sometimes, you know, with emails and things of that nature, notifications are missed. So we want definitely you as the hub vendor that's interested in working on our projects to, to stay abreast of what opportunities are out there and definitely you can contact us at any time to say okay is this something that's in my wheelhouse is this something that that um uh, that i i should be interested in and like i said you definitely want to make take advantage of the pre-bid conferences that go on with these with these projects um, so that you can learn more directly from the project managers as well as the others that may be bidding on the project Thanks, Tiffany. And Vonda and Carlos, I'm not leaving you out. So um, to the audience, the reason why I asked the universities is, uh, you know, where do y'all post on the SPD or on their website? Universities are not required to post their bid opportunities on the Electronic State Business Daily, but you heard that they do choose to post that information there. So that's a good thing. Um, and Vonda, and then Carlos after Vonda goes, if you, um, if y'all could explain um, at what level those class and item codes are identified when y'all are bidding out projects. So I heard Vonda, I heard y'all have some larger projects, but I heard y'all have some specific uh, trade related projects as well or bid opportunities. If y'all want to explain that a little. Sure. So um, for our larger projects, and that would be for us anything $25,000 or more, we are going to handle those as a formal solicitation, meaning we're going to post those to the ESBD um, and send out notification to all the vendors on the CMBL registered under those class and item codes. Now for the smaller trade uh, type of purchases under $25,000. We're still going to uh, solicit vendors from the ESBD. However, it's not going to be a formal posting, but we are going to um, look for vendors in that specific category, two of which will be hubs. So I want to encourage you, if you are not hub certified and you are a, a vendor that falls under the hub categories, please register because as much as possible, 
when we can, we like to contract with hubs for our informal purchases being less than $25,000. When we only get three bids, two of the three bids will be from hub, hub vendors. And for vendors, for purchasers that are even smaller than that, $5,000 or less, we try to go to hubs as much as possible. Again, we do go to the CMBL to find those vendors, but as much as possible, if we can find a hub vendor that offers the best value, we will try to go to them first. And Carlos? So Textile operates a little differently. Um, again, we, although we follow the state requirements uh, where we post things on the SBD, we do, uh, again, at the high level of the project, we do make an ICB class and item codes related to those specific projects. Um, on the DBE side, we also use the NA NAICS codes, which are North American Industry Classification System codes, uh, which tie to our DBE program. Uh, those, when you look at our projects, uh, which are also available on our website, you'll see NAC codes that are there. Uh, that's how we also classify a lot of uh, the projects that we have that are available. So again, unlike the states that we use two different forms of, of codes, we use NIGP class added codes we're posting to the ESBD, but we also use NAICS codes, which related to DB, which related to our DBE uh, certification program. Uh, so I just want to make that aware, make you aware of that we do, of course, follow best value. So uh, with regards to our construction projects, a lot of it is based on low bid. Uh, so make sure that you're aware of that. Make sure that you are competitive in your bidding. Make sure that you, again, plan versus react. Make sure you look at historical procurements to see uh, what the dollar threshold was or, or what the, uh, if you can get your hands on some bidders list to see uh, how your competitors are bidding. That's what you want to really look at and focus on when you bid. Uh, again, remember, low bid is, is the majority of how we award projects. Okay, thank you. Um, next question, can we contact your office for networking with the primes for opportunities you have listed, or how can I network or contact the primes? So, so I think... Go ahead, Carlos. We'll just let Carlos and Vonda and Tiffany and Keith answer in that order. So for TextDot, again, as I mentioned during my presentation, uh, there is a, a pre-qualification listing available of general contractors that are already pre-qualified to bid on TextDot projects. So if you're interested in working with these entities, you can look at the listing uh, that is available. It has all their contact information, has contact information in there. Uh, uh, that you can reach out to to communicate with them. Again, each of them may have their own uh, requirements and how they select subcontractors, but I would recommend going through that. Uh, our PEPS division, again, they also have a pre-certification uh, pre uh, listing as well. Uh, you can reach out to our PEPS division to see uh, who is pre-certified to work or bid on Texas pro tech projects. Uh, so that you can see who you can reach out to as well. That's all I have. Thanks, okay. Carla. Okay, so, um, so at the general land office, one of the best ways you're going to be able to uh, get in touch with a prime is by attending one of the pre-proposal or pre-submittal conferences we have for solicitations. Um, after we have those, we typically post a sign-in sheet of everyone that attended, and that'll give you an idea of some of the vendors who are interested in that solicitation. So you can reach out to them on their own, on your own and try to partner with them uh, to respond to a solicitation. Um, after that, uh, once the vendor uh, is, the contracts are awarded, uh, like I said, we will post a list of all the awarded vendors. So with that also gives you an opportunity to contact those vendors for subcontracting opportunities. And what some smaller companies do is they contact us, uh, they send us their information and uh, what their specialty is. And we uh, compile a list of potential subcontractors because a lot of times some of the contractors when preparing their proposal reach out to us and tell us that they have a hard time finding hubs. They, they are interested in subcontracting with a hub, but they're not able to find any. 
So sometimes we refer to a list that we have and give them ideas of companies that they can reach out to and partner with. So if you're interested in, in being on, on the list, contact myself or Daphne, give us your information. Uh, my information's in the slide deck from this presentation. And, and we can definitely talk with you one-on-one uh, -on -one in more detail. And for Texas A&M University system, for instance, for our uh, competitive seal proposal CSPs, we usually have a pre-bid meeting. So with that, that's a way that you can network with these prime vendors and show them your capability that you have. Um, with the CMAR and design builds, the general uh, contractor will usually have networking events, meetings, and usually um, AM systems involved in those as well. And, and again, that's a, another way, another outlet to um, tell these prime vendors, you know, all your talents and capabilities that you have. Um, for any of the projects that are uh, specific to you inquiring, you always can contact myself or Jeff uh, at the AM system office. Yes. So, like my colleagues have said, the pre-bid uh, the pre-bid conferences are an excellent opportunity to network with those who um, intend to bid on our projects as prime, um, or those who have already experienced working on our projects on our campus. But definitely, I cannot stress enough to use our office as a resource to make those connections for you. Um, for instance, I know I, I was talking about the ASH project earlier and, and how they're having a pre-bid today, but um, we've partnered with them um, in the beginning of this project to do a whole entire construction institute. I know that um, a couple of my colleagues talked about pre-qual programs and things of that nature, and I know that um, with a lot of these uh, primes, they, they do have their pre-qualifications. You don't have to be pre-qual to, uh, to do business with the University of Texas at Austin, but sometimes as a sub, you will have to have a pre-qualification with those particular uh, GCs. So um, uh, we've partnered with um, with some of our GCs in the past to do construction institutes, to do subcontractor trainings, um, to, to get you all of the details in doing business with those particular uh, uh, contractors. So, um, so definitely we are a resource to make those connections and to make those introductions and to definitely help those hub businesses that are seeking to scale and grow and do business with, with uh, different uh, contractors in the community. Hey, thank you all for your input. Uh, next question, please explain plan versus reacting. I think that was Carlos that was mentioning plan versus reacting. And what he's saying is you need to research, do your research and, and understand how these different um, entities procure their construction projects, who's a, been awarded those uh, projects in the past, what are the requirements for those, what have the budgets been for those. You need to build your knowledge base so that you can respond accordingly when a bid opportunity is available and you're not having to backtrack and uh, knee-jerk reaction hurry up and get numbers in there and you miss something carlos if you want to add anything to that yeah you hit, you hit, the, you hit the nail on the head you know the, the but just to add the a lot of what i deal with sometimes is i have companies calling me trying to get on projects that are at the letting stage uh and the term letting and text out means solicitate solicitation so they're at the letting stage already, uh, trying to get on a project that has been on the been on the schedule for the past two years. Uh, at that time, when you're trying to get on a project, when when the project's already being solicited, a lot of times it's too late because a lot of these general contractors have already done do, do their due diligence to put their project teams together. Uh, so again, you really want to you really want to get ahead of the curve by looking at what we have planned for the next biennium so that you can see which projects you want to be involved with and then start communicating with those general contractors to see how you can get included into their into their projects uh, project teams again because they're they're pre-planning a lot of these a lot of these companies are already pre-planning 
way even before the before the projects even left. So again, that's that's part of what I mean by plan versus react. Uh, again, and, and then uh, everything else that that Lynn Lynn addressed, which is uh, understanding the requirements, understanding any specifications or or certifications that are going to be needed, uh, because at, at times there could be some type of you may have to have some type of special certification to work on a specific construction project and if your company doesn't have it you may not be considered so again it's doing your due doing uh, your due diligence to make sure you have all your yeah you have every all your ducks in a row so that by the time the project's solicited you've already been considered for that project as uh, to be included in the project team you've got all all the necessary certifications you you uh, um, uh, have an understanding of how your competitors bid. If if you decide to bid on the project, uh, you have uh, you have a, your own project schedule planned out. Uh, again, depending on whether or not you're taking on multiple projects, you have all your financials, your bonding requirements, your insurance requirements. Everything's ready to go at the time at the time that you're about to bid on a project. Yeah. Thanks, Carlos. Um, you know, a lot of resources, a lot of acronyms have been mentioned today, and um, we want you to understand what those are. We want you to understand the flow of our processes, um, and that's why your biggest resource is a hub coordinator at those agencies and universities. So um, make sure you're understanding who those key players are, and if you're driving around Austin and you go down MLK Boulevard and you see the big hole in the middle of the ground outside the Bob Bullock and say you're an excavation company, you might think, oh, there's an opportunity for me, but they've already bid that out and they're already in the midst of that process. Um, so you'll wanna learn how the state does business, how the universities conduct business, um, understand that process, understand their bidding requirements and thresholds, understand who their key players are so that you can prepare and plan and network um, with those entities or individuals you need to connect with so you're ready to take on more business. So Tom, can I, can do I, have, can I add sure. one more thing? Uh, one, of the, one of the pitfalls I also see plan versus react is making sure that you have the financials so that when you did when you get awarded a contract, if you are awarded a contract, also learn how to manage a contract because a lot of companies that I have, I receive questions from is asking me, you know, when, when do we get paid? Well, it's every, all the payment information is based on your contract, but I had some vendors assuming that they would be given a percentage of the project, up, I'm sorry, a percentage of the funding up front, but that's not the way the state works. Again, it's make sure that you understand how the funding, how we pay out, uh, contractors for specific projects and not assuming that you're going to get funding up front for a project because again uh, we have a, we have a different way unlike the private sector we have a different way in how we pay pay out for, uh, for projects okay. okay thank you all and that appears to wrap up our questions for today okay thanks tom thanks guys um tracy if you'll take me to the next slide we want to remind the audience that uh, the annual Doing Business Texas style spot bid fair will be held this year on August 3rd and 4th. Um, and we will, DIR will be giving a spot bid fair portal training session on July 14th. And in your handout of the uh, slides, there's a link to the registration. So you can go in today and, and register for that training. We're gonna cover um, where the bid opportunities will be posted, how you can extract that information, looking at the bid documents, making sure you're submitting everything when you respond to those bid opportunities. So if you're interested in hearing any of that information, please join us on July 14th. Also, there's a link um, below that identifies where you can register for the spot bid fair, um, and we are partnering with the Dallas-Fort Worth Minority Supplier Development Council in their annual event, Access 2020 Expo, um, so you can see additional registration information there. Next slide. So this is going to conclude um, our first round of Hub Talk Series. 
You can find previous um, sessions and recordings on the DIR website. We've provided a link and included with those is a copy of the presentation, a recording and the questions and answers. So if you missed any of those previous uh, presentations, please go out there, please use those as resources. We will have this recording posted as soon as we get all the questions and answers completed. Um, and we will post it to that same website. So if you need a refresher, if you have any questions, those are resources and tools for you. And you can find them um, at dir.texas.gov and they are on the Hub Program webpage towards the bottom of the page. Next slide. Uh, so some upcoming talk, Hub Talk series, we will return in the fall of 2020. Uh, so stay tuned to the Hub Calendar of Events that is located on the Comptroller's website. And I want to remind you, um, you know, we've talk, talked about networking. Mm -hmm. We've talked about connecting with agencies and universities and key personnel. You're going to find networking events on the Hub Calendar of Events. So if you want to bookmark that page and check that out, we're going to really uh, work on doing a big push we may not be having in-person events um, moving forward, but if we, whatever type of event we may have, whether it's virtual or in-person, um, we're going to have those posted on the Hub Calendar. So if you'll bookmark that and keep an eye out for that, you'll see relative events related to, to your service or product area or an entity you may be looking um, to do business with. And then also on our DIR website, um, we have information for vendors, how to become a DIR vendor, and we also post hub events that we are participating in, that we are hosting, um, and, and with on our own calendar. So if you want to bookmark our calendar as well, um, you'll find different information related to different events we host and attend. Next page. So again, we're just going to wrap up, and we want to send out a Great big thank you to Vonda, Carlos, Keith, and Tiffany. Um, thank you for joining us today. We've provided you their contact information. Again, we're living in a virtual world. So I just want to remind you, if you want to contact anybody, the first, the first and easiest way to contact anybody is probably via email these days. Um, we're all connected. So you have our contact information there. If you have any questions, if you need to follow up, if you can't remember anything we said today, use these individuals as resources so you can figure out how to do business with the state of Texas. Next page. So we'd like to thank you all for attending and participating with us in this first round of Hub Talk series. Um, if you have any questions, again, please feel free to contact us at any time. Thank you.